Hey, Brandon. Hey, Fabio. How's it going? Right. I'm good. What do we have today? We actually have a pizza EG for the first time on EG Talk. Oh, well, you know, I, a wise teacher once told me that uh, children are just small adults, so we're in good shape. Mm, not really sure about that. Uh, well, I have an idea. Okay. I have this friend uh, from hell. We can summon him. If you know the right incantation. <laughs> Let's do it. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> oh, I, I, can't, I can't see anything. Oh, There's fire coming out of your eyes. My Dr. eyes are still <laughs> blank. <laughs> welcome. Ah, oh, there you go. Ah, welcome. welcome. Oh, Julie, uh, I heard you're an expert on pediatric EEG, even uh, though you're living down in the underworld now. Right. Well, I'm kind of a kid myself, so that helps. <laughs> Awesome. Help us you're, out. you're the very first Pete's guest on our show, Jurian, so we're really excited. Excellent. Thank you. All right. So let's do it. What uh, what do we have here? It's kind of interesting because it has a spike in there that uh, that may not be um, easy to understand when you take a first glance at it. I don't think it's necessarily a theatric EG phenomenon. So mm. um, as you can see, we have a, a bipolar, AP bipolar montage, and mm -hmm. um, um, we have a uh, the temporal chain here on the left side, and the temporal chain on the on the opposite, and then the parasagittal chain left, parasagittal chain right, and then the midline. So we're looking basically for a line symmetry along this line, as you know, and then uh, you can see that the patient is awake because there's some eye blinks and some muscle. Mm -hmm. As the patient falls asleep, you can see some slow eye movements okay. here, yep. and uh, the uh, patient is, uh, is basically uh, starts to rove the eyes a little bit, and the uh, muscle activity is disappearing. Mm -hmm. Now, e pediatric EEGs are different than adult EEGs because there's an evolution. They change over time because the brain is developing, okay. um, but another kind of more global difference is that the voltages are are higher and often just these these uh these EGs are more dramatic mm -hmm. um and i'm talking like for example doing an outpatient eeg of an alzheimer patient right where you have to kind of squeeze to see an alpha rhythm or um you have to have them hyperventilate to, to bring out certain things and 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 pediatric egs especially in toddlers are just wilder they're more noisy but they're also there's much more to see so they kind of catch your eye. So I, I like pediatric EGs for that uh, reason. So here we see a nice example mm -hmm. of SEM, slow eye movements. Mm -hmm. The patient is drowsy and we can see that the, uh, that the posterior dominant rhythm here is starting to kind of wax and wane. Mm -hmm. And How some... old is this kid again, Jurian? I forgot to look at the chart this time around. I got so excited with you coming. This one is actually a little bit older. This is like an 11 year old. So, and then here, and we can see that some real dropout of the uh, of the background frequencies. Uh -huh. and the patient wakes up a little bit again. Here's a burst of slowing that that in itself I you know uh -huh. I would probably pass related to drowsiness. So far normal really within normal limits I think. Yeah, exactly. And um, I'm going to go a little faster as as we stay, keep staring at the screen here. Mm -hmm. You've got some sleep transients coming in. Exactly. Here's some early vertex wave. And then the patient wakes up uh -huh. and draws us off again. I'll stop with a here's some nice, nice vertex waves. And perhaps there's some slowing here, but then you can't look at slowing during that vertex wave, of course. Wow, these are dramatic. Yeah. Just yeah. kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so far like adults. Uh, Confirming my theory. Uh, <laughs> there's another one of those bursts, and this time it's even more innocuous. I don't see any sharp elements mixed in. Mm -hmm. And um, so far, so oh. there's a vertex wave. This nice. one is a bit sharper than that. Uh, sorry, this one is a bit sharper than that one, but so far, nothing to write home about. I, oh, shoot. I was already writing the letter. <laughs> <laughs> Just hold your horses because it will come. I think it's a normal. It's a normal EG. No. No. I, yeah. No, I think this kid's going to be. There's some fine. stuff. I think it's oh, better. Wait a minute. Hmm. What is this? So here are some, 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 some things that are not entirely normal. And we have some more examples of that elsewhere. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they are not posts. 
I was going to say maybe they're posts, but they don't really look like posts too much. They're broad. They extend all the way to PZ. Mm -hmm. But these spikes are kind of hanging and they don't reverse. Mm -hmm. If I put my, um, my uh, laser eyes on, they, they're the spikes that reverse nowhere. <laughs> so that's kind of a tribute to uh, Frank Duffy, um, one of our EG uh, founders that um, um, who turned 84 this week. Wow. Yeah, nice. And he called it the spike that reverses nowhere, but then people start to, uh, to sigh because he's been talking about these spikes for um, a long time. Here's another uh, example. These are not vertex waves. Here's your vertex waves, just to contrast it. This, this one is a bit better, although they are horribly narrow. So it's not really my favorite type of spike because it's almost so narrow that you would be a bit skeptic, but it meets maybe some of your other criteria with a slow wave follow. -up. Yeah, no, these are needle-like little spikes. They look, a, they're not in the right place to be Rolandic spikes, but a, maybe, a, actually they don't look the same, but, but they are all, those are also needle-like. Yeah. Exactly, they disrupt the background though. Yeah. And they, they do, yeah, and they have a slow wave afterward. And yeah. Um, Hard to say whether their slopes are different. I think they're maybe steeper going up than coming down. Yeah. But honestly, I was just looking at them. I would think they're muscle artifact. The patient does not sleep very long. So we'll go back and look at those spikes with the different montage in a sec. Would, would you say these are sleep activated? Yes. So there's a difference between sleep activated and sleep potentiated or sleep augmented, as you know. And I don't um, actually. I don't. What, what's the difference? difference between sleep activated and sleep potentiated is that that with sleep activated spikes technically you don't see them during wakefulness and they get activated during sleep and with sleep potentiated spikes or sleep augmented spikes you see them both during wakefulness and sleep and they just get more prominent or more frequent gotcha now here i would call them posts without too much uh do but they are they're too big they're, they're I few. is i don't know if this is a correct use of the term but would you could we call this dyshormia? No, dyshormia is a uh, phenomenon where um, the vertex waves uh, are very sharp. And sometimes you can see spikes within a vertex wave or within a K complex. And you see it in kids with febrile seizures. It's stretched up the screen. Yeah, yeah, if they don't look good, that's a good technique to just make them look better. Exactly, for, for teaching purposes. Now, let's switch a montage to a, uh, an average. Okay. And then you'll see an interesting phenomenon because now they are here mm -hmm. and they're facing downwards in okay. the posterior leads. Okay. And they're facing upwards in this, uh, in the anterior leads. Mm. Now, of course, if the spikes are of high enough voltage, then you can get con contamination of your average reference. You have to be a bit careful, mm. but this is basically a phase reversal or the opposite of a phase reversal. But it's a phase reversal in the average reference. And this is actually, here's a nice example. Up, mm -hmm. up, and down, down. What's your conclusion? The conclusion is that this spike is, has a horizontal dipole, or it's a tangential spike. Mm -hmm. So the posterior portions of the head are positive, and the anterior portions of the head are negative. So if you go from the front to the back, um, or so actually easier to think of um, from the back to the front. In order to get a phase reversal, you need to go through a negative minimum or through a negative maximum, right? You need an upslope and a downslope or a downslope and then an upslope. And if you don't go through the uh, entirety of that maximum negativity or maximum no positivity, then you don't have the other side of the phase reversal. So here from O2, 2P4 is from very positive to a little less positive. And from P4 to C4 is from very positive to somewhat um, you know, more negative. And here's even more negative and there's even more negative. So we go from very, very positive to very, very negative. Spikes are right central and uh, they are um, uh, forward facing meaning that if you would draw this as a dipole, that the, post, the positive end of the dipole would be in the back. So kind of the opposite of a Rolandic spike. Yeah. Does that, does that help us uh, clinically though? Does that, is it suggestive of any? It does because, so this, this could, um, so you can imagine that normally if you have um, um, 
the, the, the little dipoles that you have that sum up to form a big dipole mm -hmm. and, and the net orientation of the cortex, if you have a sulcus and on one bank, the voltages go in and on the other bank, the voltages go out, then normally they cancel each other out. Oh, wow. That's, that is so cool. in the sulcus, uh -huh. they can, this one, you know, projects, hold on, I need to do it mirrored. This one projects there and this one projects there. This is why I didn't become a surgeon I can, my 3D set. Nice. Anyway, they can, these guys cancel each other out. But if you have uh -huh. uh, one bank, for example, resected, then all of a sudden these dipoles are no longer opposed and you can get a horizontal dipole. So if this is a resection cavity, mm -hmm. cyst, or simply cortex that is not involved, like the reason why it is uh, a horizontal dipole in Rolandic epilepsy. So mm -hmm. if you would have a source that would span a big sulcus, the orientation of the dipole with the positivity in the back of the head can actually tell you that the um, dipoles are facing, um, so it must be then the posterior bank, right? Because the net orientation is forward. If you would see as the dipoles as a flashlight looking forward, uh -huh. and then the positive end would be at the back, then they have to sit on, on an ingoing sulcus or ingoing structure uh, with the positive end in the back. Oh, can you see it? Okay, red, yeah. red yeah. dipole yeah. and blue uh, dipole, right? Uh, oh, wow. It's cool. So I put my red and blue dipole in this semi-transparent head. Uh -huh. and you can create voltage fields what? in That's the amazing. head. So my arm is in for a horizontal dipole, you know that you're going to see both the aspects. Sorry, there's too much reflection from my camera. But, oh, here you can see it now. It's beautiful. Right? So that's horizontal because you can see both aspects of the dipole. Love it. That's great. It's a great way to teach. Um, yeah, exactly. I usually that like appreciate that. When I give my talk on, uh, on, on source locations. Are you, are you listening, Brendan? His fellows appreciate that. I believe it. No, this is, it's amazing.